Hey folks, welcome to Truck King. Here on the channel, we always go on about real world testing. When we test trucks, we always tow trailers. Well, today we're testing a pair of minivans and I feel uniquely qualified because I have three kids all under the age of five and I'm a minivan owner, so I know a thing or two about how kids like minivans. In this video, we're gonna compare that, the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in, to that, the brand new Honda Odyssey. Okay, folks, let's see if Steve will fit in a minivan. <laughs> and you know what? We're kicking this video off this way because the only reason you're buying a minivan, frankly, is for the second and third row. This is what makes these vehicles work. It doesn't really matter what's going on up front. Let's talk about the back here. So before I climb in, I do have to point out the fact that we don't have a bench seat here and we do in the Honda. You could get it, but this model just has the captain's chairs. Now, another thing I wanna show you, which I really like on the Pacifica, is this secret little button down here on the B pillar. You hit that and it pushes the driver's seat all the way forward. Now, first of all, this is nice just for climbing in and out, whether for an adult or for a child. But more importantly, if I'm installing a big monster child seat, look at all this elbow room I have in here. It really does make a difference. And it's nice that that's just a one touch and forward it goes or hit it again and it comes back. So second row leg room here, this is 39 inches of second row leg room. And you know what? It's plenty. Even with this seat coming back into my driving position, I have enough knee room. I have just enough headroom. We do have a huge panoramic sunroof here. That's worth pointing out too. And I stand at six foot two, but I fit in this second row pretty dang well. And that's important for a minivan. Now, the other thing I like these days, look at all this adjustability. That's six, eight inches at least of adjustability. So that's nice too, that if you wanna give the third row people more space, you can. Now, besides that, I have a USB-C, I have an HDMI hookup for my screen system here and an aux in here on both of the seats, which I think is pretty cool. And then of course the uh, optional entertainment system. And now why don't I climb in the third row? We'll see how I fit back there. So these seats fold and slide forward giving me not a ton of space to get in, but not too bad. So, on paper, this is 36 inches of rear seat leg room, but you know what? It feels like a little more than that. I have enough room here. The floor definitely feels a little taller. I can feel my knees sitting up a little bit, but it's not that bad. And then I have just enough headroom, but I do have enough. I'm not touching. I stand at six foot two. Um, I could legitimately ride back here and that's definitely important for a minivan. Now, another thing I wanna point out in the third row, we get these sunshades. They're up there in the second row as well. These are really important when you have little kids and they're getting sun in the face. And of course they can't reach over and control those. So you leave those up for your kids. They like that. Other amenities here in the third row, a couple cup holders, a USB and a USB-C port. And then maybe my favorite is right down here. You're actually getting a proper three prong plug. And I like the positioning of that because that could be used for the second row or the third row. Now let's go in the very back and see what the storage is like. So out back here behind this third row, you're getting about 32 cubic feet of space. I really like how deep this well is right here. That's nice for fitting stuff in. And then another thing Chrysler does, they give us this little storage bin over here. Now, first of all, this is where the cord goes for your plug-in hybrid. So it has a spot to store it. But if you don't keep that in there, look how much space is in here. You can fit all kinds of different things. Plus your spare tire inflator kit is in there. That's just just a handy little spot to have. Now, when it comes time to fold these seats down, oh, and before I do, I should mention, in the second row, both of those seats have top tethers. Back here in the third row, you're only getting two top tethers for three seating positions. That's something to note for those of you with car seats. So, to tumble, you simply 
go like so, and that folds nice and flat. This is over 80 cubic feet of storage right here, and that is really quite a bit, and nearly a flat floor in this Pacifica. Now let's go to the Odyssey and see how big that thing is. So climbing in, this is 40 inches of second row leg room. Like I said, a little bit more than I had over there in the Pacifica. And it feels like it, but it doesn't also feel that much bigger. I'm comfortable. I got more than enough headroom here, more than enough knee room. Now, when it comes to amenities, two USB ports and an HDMI plug-in down there. Unlike the Pacifica's entertainment system where you get two screens, an individual screen for both, Back here, we only get one screen in the Honda. We do have the sunshades on the windows. I definitely appreciate that as well. And there's also HVAC controls here in the second row, and that goes for the Chrysler too. Now let's climb in the back and see what's different back there. So the Honda, the seat does the same thing. It just leans forward. Oh, I'm getting my belt in the way here. Uh, leans forward and then pushes. Leaves me about the same amount of space to get in. And here we are. So. This is just a hair bigger on paper than the Chrysler. And yeah, I'd say actually in the real world, it is a little bigger. I have a little bit more knee room in here, a little bit more headroom. But same thing as the other minivan, I could legitimately sit back here for a long drive and that's definitely what you want out of a vehicle that's meant to haul passengers. Now, other amenities in this third row, we do get the sunshades, love that. I also get a physical plug-in for my headphones to watch the entertainment screen and a USB port on both sides, plus a 12 volt over there on the passenger side too. That's pretty cool. Once again, we got lots of amenities and lots of space. Let's go look at the storage. The storage numbers here are basically the exact same. Behind this third row, you're getting just over 32 cubic feet. And just like the Pacifica, the Honda's got this nice, nice deep well down here, so you can fit in a lot of stuff. Now I mentioned this before, but I'll show you. The Honda here has one, two, three top tethers in the third row. And once again, the Chrysler does not. So if having more positions for your kid seats is important to you, the Honda is the winner. Now, these tumble in the exact same way, revealing not quite as flat a floor as we have over there in the Pacifica, but still not bad. Now, behind that second row, that's over 80 cubic feet of storage. It's hard to say one of them is really that much bigger than the other. They're super similar. When it comes to features back here, I also get a 12 volt at the very rear end of my Honda, and then a storage bin here, here, and over here. So both of these companies have really paid attention to those little storage spots too. I can't find a lot of huge differences when it comes to space and cargo. So let's go for a drive and see if we can find some more. And folks, here we are driving in this Honda Odyssey. I've already said it, but I'm gonna mention it again just for full disclosure. I own a 2015 Honda Odyssey. When uh, my wife and I had our second baby, we knew it was minivan time. So we gave in, we got the Odyssey, and that thing has been great for us. And I wanted to lead with that, Dad, because what actually struck me most about this Odyssey is how little has changed to kind of the nuts and bolts of this thing. It's still just a naturally aspirated V6. This is a 10-speed automatic. Mine's only a six-speed, so they've added some gears to the transmission. But besides that, they haven't done a lot powertrain-wise. It's still only front-wheel drive. You can't get all-wheel drive in an Odyssey. Driving this thing for a week, that's what struck me, Dad. It drives similar to my van, power similar. The differences are all in here. The technology the comfort, the more USB ports and wireless phone charging and the screen back there for the kids. I don't have any of that stuff. Um, but yeah, that, all of that being said, I guess, let me talk to you now and just say, what do you think about the way this thing drives? You know what, these are nice vehicles in as much as, I mean, they're long, wheelbase, they're low to the ground. So just in general, they drive well. Yeah. They drive like a big sedan. Um, you know, this is not SUV-like, not truck-like. Um, I don't know. I had a Windstar for about 10 years. And, you know, I'll riff on that point right there, which is that there comes a point in your life where those are the, the minivan years when you got kids. They start out when they're babies and they got so much junk you got to carry around that you need a van. And then as they get older, it's all the sports equipment and the fact that they can't go anywhere without their friends. <laughs> so you got to have a place to put them. And then if you're like me, when he got his first band, I was the roadie and carried all the drum kits around. So you know what? I totally get it. 
And then finally, when they went off to university, I got rid of the van. I don't miss it. But there's a time in your life when this is probably the best vehicle you can own. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that anyone who goes for an SUV over a minivan to haul kids, that's just a wrong decision. Unless you need the all-wheel drive or the ground clearance or the towing, like there's just no reason why you wouldn't go for a minivan. Now let me dive into some of this new technology and tell you what I really like. And we'll start with that rear entertainment system. Not only is it Wi-Fi compatible so you can hook up to streaming services, there's also a built-in DVD player down here in the dash and a Blu-ray player. So if you want to bring discs, you can do that as well. I appreciate that. But then beyond that, and, and something, again, I tested this with the kids and the kids loved it. Honda has introduced a new thing called How Much Farther. And basically what it is is you'll put a destination into your nav system and then a little screen shows up back there for the kids which shows them how much farther it'll tell them how many kilometers or miles until you get to where you're going and even cooler than that that it's got five different settings so you can be a little boat in the ocean you can be a little honda odyssey you can be a little camo honda odyssey on safari and then animals jump out and spaceships come down and my kids sit back there and go dad the spaceships are here the spaceships so again i think it's a smart move by honda and maybe kids don't just want to watch shows constantly it's nice just to leave something up there so they can get that information. It's a, a fun little thing that Honda did, which again, as a parent, it means a lot because those kids are actually uh, distracted back there. I appreciate that. Well, I guess this is the question that I got to ask you is, do they not still go, you know, when are we going to get there? Oh, yeah. My daughter, Olivia, her, her latest thing is how many more minutes, Dad? How many more minutes, Dad? How many more minutes, Dad? About every five minutes. So that was it, right? Honda, they saw the problem and they offered a solution. And I actually think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Now also, when your kids are fully distracted watching shows back there, you can go into your computer up here and you can go to Cabin Talk. And when you turn on Cabin Talk, it is now amplifying my voice, not only to the rear speakers in the van, but it's amplifying it into those Bluetooth headphones. So if those kids are watching a show, it pauses their show and it lets me talk directly to them. Hey kids. Hey daddy. What are you watching? Oh, it's about Moana? Okay, I'll turn it back on, okay? It's still an ad. Okay, here you go. And then outside of Cabin Talk Dad, we also have Cabin Watch. So this is the camera system, which lets you see the kids in the back. Jeez. Now, the Pacifica has this as well, but they're a little different. Here in the Honda, it's pinched to zoom, and you guys can see it here. So you can pinch and zoom in on whichever kid you want to look at at any given moment. Whichever one the troublemaker is. That's kind of neat. And you know what? You know what this is truly good for? Rear-facing car seats. Once your kids are facing forward, they're kind of accessible. They're pretty easy to see. But when your little kids are still in the rear-facing seats, you can't see them. That's true. You can't see them at all. Right? And a lot of people, like we have them as well. You buy the mirrors that you put up on the headrest to reflect to them. Those can actually be unsafe as well. So this is a great solution for allowing you to see your rear-facing kids, zoom in on them, and you can check whether or not they're napping. Now, like I said, Pacifica has this too, but it works a little bit differently. So we'll dive into that when we get into that. Thing. On the other hand, if you're watching this by now, your head's spinning, you might want to look into birth control. <laughs> Last thing I want to mention here in the Odyssey, this isn't something we always get into, but when you're purchasing a minivan, again for your family, safety becomes top of mind. So I just wanted to read out the NHTSA crash test ratings. NHTSA is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and they do all their own crash tests and give out these ratings. So we're so, not going to do crash tests? Uh, no, I don't think Honda would be happy. <laughs> we could do it once and then never get a Honda ever again. <laughs> Um, so here in the Odyssey, we're almost five stars across the board. Five stars overall, five stars frontal crash, five stars side crash, and only four stars in the rollover. Now in the Pacifica Hybrid, it's almost the same, and the overall is also five stars, but the frontal crash is only four stars. So the Pacifica got one star less in frontal than the Odyssey. It's probably a, a negligible difference to be honest, but if you want to look at which one got better marks, the answer is the Honda. So another thing I like is when you come to a stop and shut the van off, 
It will actually bring up those rear seats and remind you to check your rear seats and literally show you any kids you may have forgotten in the back. Now this is becoming more common in a lot of vehicles, but I think it's even cooler now because you actually have that camera so you can look in and make sure you didn't forget anybody. Now we'll go jump into Pacifica, see what that's like. And now folks, here we are in this Pacifica plug-in. So we did charge it up overnight. We used a bit of the range up this morning. We have 26 kilometers left of all electric range. Uh, this Pacifica is rated for 32 miles. It's about 50 kilometers. So that's what you're gonna get on a fully charged battery. And you can see it here. We only plugged it into a 120 volt plug. It's a regular old plug in the wall. And it said that it was gonna take just over 12 hours to get a full recharge. Now, Dad, I actually don't think that's crazy just because it's basically overnight, right? Every single time overnight, you're gonna plug it in. It's gonna charge up. However, if you were to own this thing, you might want to look into getting a level 2 240 volt charger installed in your home. If you were to do that, you're only talking about just over two hours to get a full charge back in this van and probably only like an hour and change to get 80% charge. So it's, it's pretty reasonable, all of those numbers, just talking about sort of the pain points when it comes to EVs. And that's the brilliance of a plug-in hybrid, right? Is you can use up all that power and then just keep on going and run it like a regular minivan. Well, that's a no range anxiety. And, and that's why Chrysler, you know, I think is really smart because they're still the only ones who have done that in this segment. Uh, we have the Sienna Hybrid now, but no plug-in over there. So the plug makes this thing a unique product in the segment, no doubt about that. There's no doubt, too, that considering what this vehicle is all about, which is ferrying your kids around, which are mostly short trips, which are just around town. It's very possible that five days a week, um, your wife could manage with the kids in this thing, never having to use a drop of gas. Absolutely. So, you know what, over time, at the cost of fuel these days, there will be a significant savings. Yeah, and that's absolutely it. And you know what, we're talking about this constantly in trucks these days, and we've heard everyone complain about the range when you're towing, but you said it, a truck is not a perfect usage case for electric. This is, because my life is a great example. We go to the grocery store, go to Walmart, we take the kids to gymnastics. It's all things just around town. And then on the weekend, maybe we drive to dad's place or we go up to the cottage and that's when you burn the gas. So absolutely, uh, the plug-in hybrid in this setting is, I think, just a, it's a, it's a winner of an idea. Now on the downside though, Dad, let's talk about how it actually drives. So the first thing I want to say is I don't understand why in the Pacifica here we don't get the drive modes that they offer in the other Jeep 4xE products. So in the Grand Cherokee 4xE and in the Wrangler 4xE, essentially the same powertrain, you can actually choose to save your electricity, to only run on electricity, or to run in hybrid mode. So you as the driver have a choice of when you're using which power source. Here in the Pacifica, it just does it for you. It's just in hybrid mode at all times. We've been noticing it likes to run on the electricity as often as it can, but then if dad puts his foot into it, the motor is gonna turn on so it's one thing I was disappointed in I don't know why we don't have those drive modes and actually leads into another point which I think is interesting which is that in this Pacifica when you get the hybrid Chrysler says towing is not recommended right there on the spec sheet they don't list the number it just says not recommended and I assume that has something to do with yeah the power delivery the transmission yeah something in there the is switch not over it. it's got something to do with the whole transmission of power yeah for sure um, which is unfortunate um, because you know that's one of the things I, I hearken back to my old Ford Windstar um, you know when I got that, first thing I did is I did put a hitch on it, and I did use to tow a uh, two-place snowmobile trailer and, and small boat, etc. Um, and, you know, if I own this thing, I would want to be able to do that on occasion, you know, my little garden, garden uh, uh, trailer or something. But... They're saying no. Now, not so in the Honda. No, that's that's true. In the Odyssey, 3,500 pounds. And that's a great number. Like you just said, two snowmobiles, a fishing boat, all kinds of different yeah, recreational small, things. Small tent trailers. I mean, these totally. things all work. And quite honestly, a minivan of that size is a pretty decent tow vehicle because it's low and long. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, if towing is what you want to do, 
don't get the hybrid Pacifica, just get the uh, regular gas model or like I said, go for the Odyssey. Now getting back to sort of the interiors here, I'll first just say up front here, Dad, I don't think I have a, a winner out of these two. They're both really nice interiors. They both feel luxurious, well put together. Um, I like the center consoles in both of them. They have loads of space. They seem to be well thought out. Up here, yeah, I'm not really leaning one way or the other. Now, one other thing I did notice, Steve, is that on my screen up front here, I can get a sort of a, a video grab of what the kids are watching on their screen. I do like that, that you can see exactly what's on their screen. In the Honda, you can't do that. It'll tell you what's on the screen, but it won't show you. So I like that here, it'll show you exactly what's back there. Well, and considering that you're, you know, particularly for the older kids, you're giving them access to the internet <laughs> you bad, might bad see. things could be happening yeah that's a fair point so the next camera though we'll talk about is the fan cam so again both of these vehicles have these cameras uh, in the pacifica it's interesting it's actually much further back it's between the second and third row in the honda it's right in the second row so the positioning is different and then in the honda i already showed you it's pinched pinch to zoom here in the pacifica you touch whichever seat you want to look at. And then over here on the right, it zooms right in to wherever you touched. So that's kind of cool, you can zoom in. And again, the, the great functionality here is rear facing child seats. You get a view right into your kids. So again, I'm not sure one system's better than the other, but how cool is it that we even have these now? I just, I think it was a brilliant uh, solution for a problem that every parent has. Well, we've gotten a lot of those differences out there now, and the last difference we'll talk about is the price. So here in Canada, this Pacifica, as it sits right here, is going to sell for about $64,000. And this is a limited with the S appearance package and then a couple of options on it. Over there in the Honda, the Odyssey that we have as it sits, $60,000 Canadian. So the Pacifica is about four grand more expensive. And then the Pacifica also has the pinnacle trim. So this thing could be loaded up even further. So it is kind of expensive. However, when we're just looking at what we have here today, this thing is only four grand more. And you know what, for the powertrain, I think that might be worth it because over a couple years, it's gonna pay itself back if the usage case is correct. So uh, yeah, I don't know how you feel about it, Dad, but in this case, I think it's kind of justified. Although 60 grand for a minivan, I guess, let me back up and just say, feels a little bit crazy. Well, on the other hand, you look at how much we're paying for trucks these days. So I guess 60 actually, to me, doesn't even feel expensive anymore. Yeah, and with screens and cabin talk and cameras and the amount of technology we're getting, yeah, fair point. There you go. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. Now, after a day of testing, we can really see that these minivans are quite similar. They're both gonna haul your family comfortably and offer a ton of amenities to your kids or whoever else is in the back. What it comes down to for me is this. There's only about four grand separating these two, and for that, I'd go for the plug-in Pacifica because I know that 90% of that van's life, I'm gonna be burning just electricity and I'm gonna make that money back on the gas. So I just appreciate that Chrysler is the only brand to jump into this market with the plug-in. And yes, for me, that would be enough to draw me in as a customer. Real quick, let me interrupt myself because what I just said is true, but honestly, only for Canada. When you look at the prices in the United States between these two models that we tested in the video, Honda USA just straight up doesn't charge quite as much of a premium as Honda Canada does. So if the difference was $12,000, I would absolutely go for the Odyssey. Now, of course, though, I need to hear from you. So go below, let me know what you think of both of these minivans. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next.